<laughs> we are live. Hello, everyone. Hello, Jermaine. Hello, Michael Kim. Thank you so much for joining me. How are What's you up? today? All right. <laughs> Doing good. Doing good. How was um, this morning for you? Did you participate in the BB drop? I no. did not. I did not. I was actually on another stream. I was on with Randy Chavez this morning. Your friend Randy. Oh! Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, Randy yeah. Sometimes, Sometimes, you know, I try and do as many of the drops as I can, but it's so hard to get them. Mm. It's like, I don't do it. I don't, I don't kill myself if I miss one. Mm, interesting. <laughs> but yeah. I, for me, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. Day. You get every single one. You got, did you get one? No. no. Jermaine, did you participate in the drop in the morning? No, I was I was I was working on another project. So like I'm I was hard at work at the art table, so couldn't get away. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Right now there are so many drops that is so hard to catch up with all of them. So yeah, yeah. sometimes you have to just choose. All right. How about if we start with this conversation? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I would like to know first about your main. Mm -hmm. What about if you can let us know a little bit of your background in case of some of the BB family, but I think everyone knows you, or the um, the or the homies <laughs> knows <laughs> more about your background. Can right. you tell us a little bit more about your background? Well, um, I was uh, I was raised in Texas. I'm I'm from Houston, and so. Um, raised in texas and um basically have always been you know i've always liked to draw and create things ever since i was ever, ever since i was a kid even before i got the official tag as an artist uh but uh i guess career wise um it began for me um back in the 90s uh just doing artwork for the for the scene here in in houston and in austin uh, rock and roll music and everything. So doing artwork for bands and for friends of mine who were in bands, I uh, had a lot of friends in little bands that would later become big bands. And so, um, the art thankfully sort of migrated along with that success. And, um, and then, you know, that opened up possibilities for me to, to, to indulge in my fine art and, um, you know, have worked for a lot of Work for a lot of bands that you know some of you love and probably some that some of you hate, but um, that kind of led me in the early two thousands into um, art toys, uh, collectible designer vinyl toys uh, that companies like uh, Strange Co and Metacom and Kid Robot put out, and I was able to to be on the ground floor of the Western vinyl scene. Um, Toys were really that sort of art toy scene was really solid over in Japan and over in the East. And so and it migrated over here and suddenly you had this new term, Western vinyl. Uh, thankfully, I was part of uh, the group of artists who who jumped to that. And uh, it's the first place that some of the characters that we see on Vivi, uh, you know, they first were realized in that format. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've done artwork for a lot of different things um, and I've worked with a lot of people and um, I've just I've been really fortunate that uh, that that people see the, the little stuff that I do. So <laughs> the biggest stuff that you do, because it's amazing, your art. And how did you define the art of German? How would you define it? Um, you know, it's difficult because for me, um, I always feel that in an ideal sense, the art should be sort of like a, you know, like in the NFT community, we, a lot of us, we use cover photos, uh, you know, little avatars. And for an artist, I think your work should be like an avatar of your life. Um, a person should be able to sort of look at your art through the years and kind of get an idea of what's going on in your life. So in that sense, the definition of what I think my art is, is always changing. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's always changing. It's hard for me to put my finger on one thing and say, this is what it means. What I'd like to at least think is that throughout all of it, it's honest. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, 
I don't want to bullshit people because um, people people see through that. They know when you're not being straight. And uh, as long as the artwork is honest, then it's that's good. How would you define this honesty in the art? Um, you know, it can become a, a, a very sort of insidious thing when you when you start creating art that you think people want to see. Um, and, and that kind of comes hand in hand with success. You know, when you get a certain amount of success, I sometimes think back to when like, you know, nobody gave, nobody knew who I was. And that was a freedom there because I did whatever the fuck, I just did whatever I wanted, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, and it was very free. So like, if I got a call from, you know, whoever, if I got a call from, you know, some band and they were like, Hey, we're playing a show. Can you do a print? Then, you know, I could just do whatever I wanted to do. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. I, I, I had this weird idea of putting a, you know, of, 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 of making a, I don't know, uh, the beat. I'm, you know, I'm looking at some prints I've done. I'm, I had a weird idea of like doing the Beatles as a bunch of monsters. Okay. I'll do it. You know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, once you have a certain amount of success, what comes along with that are expectations. And then people expect to see what they want to see. And it's hard for you as an artist too, because you know, like if you're doing this to support yourself financially, you know that if you do these things, you get money. So I think dishonesty for me is when an artist like, I'm not gonna front and say like, I don't care about the money because I like money. It allows me to purchase goods and services. <laughs> but <laughs> of course. but, uh, but uh, at the same time, I think you need to be balanced and make sure that uh, you are creating the art that you naturally want to create and not creating it, you know, to just to please fans, whatever, you know. So can I ask a hard question? How would you define art? What is art for you, man? <laughs> I don't, you know what I think art? I think art is the residue of living. Mm. That's what it is. It's like, it's, it's just, uh, if you want to know what a, what a civilization, for instance, felt about things, look at the art. It's the residue. It's like, you know, I always say that like, you know, when you eat, you sort of, uh, you sort of eat food and then you kind of like process the things you need and the rest is kind of like waste, you know? But those things you need, um, they sort of present themselves in, you know, nice bones and good skin and nice whatever, you know? And, and I think art is that way. It's like, it's a product of living and it, uh, and some people would say you could classify it as the waste product of living. You know, it's like you live a life and what you leave behind is your art. And that's why I believe that. I mean, I know this is a real, you know, middle school art teacher thing to say, but <laughs> I believe that everybody is an artist. I really do. I think I think people, when they are real little, they are told by stupid adults that mm -hmm. they are not artists. Everybody is an artist and talent, talent, man, that's subjective. Like, I mean, you know, that's subjective. I mean, you know, Vincent Van Gogh's work is viewed as priceless these days. And when he lived, like they didn't give a shit. They thought it was horrible, you know, like mm -hmm. talent is like this subjective thing that that people sort of, you know, define. And it that's all bullshit, man. Just. You know, art is whatever you make, and it's art because you say it is. Mm. That's it. And so, uh, yeah. That is very deep, and I see in the audience people <laughs> saying that this does a really deep answer. And I would like to know more about the creative process. So when you are creating, what looks like the creative process for your main? Do you have like a ritual, like a schedule? How how do you work? Well, I mean, um, typically, if I find out, 
I mean, it's some sometimes, you know, I'm like, I just get an idea and I start it and 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 it may be just something that I want to realize for myself and there's no real purpose for it yet, but I just do it and then I put it to the side. But whenever I'm like hired, uh, and Mike Michael knows this because he, you know, on this project that we worked on that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I typically need a while to literally do nothing but think about the project. So if somebody calls me up and goes like, hey, man, we need this, 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 and you've got three months to do it. I'll take two of those months and do nothing <laughs> but just think. Like I'll, you know, kick around the house and think, just go up, you know, it's a luxury, you know, um, but that allows the idea to become fully formed. And then when I sit down, uh, it kind of just falls out of my hands at that point. Um, but as far as like a defined process, I mean, I've got habits, I guess, like that, but I try not to like link myself to one process because when I do, then it starts to feel like work. You know, and uh, and then if it starts to feel like work and I'm bummed out, then it's not fun. And like, if it's not fun, then I might as well be, you know, doing some some other not fun thing for a whole lot more money. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> that's basically it. That's basically it. Yeah, I could speak on that a little bit. Jermaine said how we've been working together for this. Uh, we first started talking back in September. And to be honest with you, my favorite part of the project has been getting to know Jermaine, working side by side, seeing his process and how he does come up with this. I mean, I say to everybody, you, and I, I say this to you, Jermaine, I mean, I think you're a brilliant guy. Like, you've really taken your time every step of the way, you know, made sure that if you have ideas, you brought them forward. You made sure you, we had a few changes along the way and and really dialed it in. It's been it's been fun to watch. And the art that's come out of this, uh, Jermaine and Gary, Gary's our generative art guy. I mean, they're knocking it out of the park. People are going to love it. They're already loving the sneak peeks, but I can't wait until they see the grid of this whole collection. I mean, you know, I've been looking at just the samples recently, and it's it's so exciting. It's, it's been a pleasure to work with you, Jermaine. It's been my favorite part. I love sitting back right now. I'm just listening to you chat it up. So, like, don't worry about me over here. We'll, uh, Okay. Well, Michael, going. don't say that because I'm getting ready for you. Okay, huh? I'm gonna leave it to your man, you know, you know and then I will go. Yeah, because <laughs> <Yeah, 'cause laughs> I, I can see in the art and the concept of homes in Dreamland and connecting what with Jermaine is saying. I would like to know, uh, Jermaine, um, like. How do you try to connect, for example, a story? Because I have heard a lot of your stories with choices, with the with the bunnies, and with the Delo, and with the Dero. I'm sorry. And what is the process of telling a story? And how do you combine this like this storytelling into mm -hmm. your art? So, would you consider yourself like a storyteller? You know what? It's it's what I. Whether I'm a whether I'm a decent storyteller, I mean, it's for others to decide. But uh, it is definitely something I aspire to be. Um, mm. I think storytelling, personally, I think storytelling is the the most superior form of art. Um, mm. I love, you know, I do two dimensional art. I create things, and you know, and I'm 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 pl proud of of a lot of what I do, but. Um, I look at people like, uh, you know, I look at people like Tolkien and Jar Jar R. Martin and, um, you know, uh, Herman Hesse and like storytellers um, that can craft these universes, these worlds where they're, and, and these worlds are populated with characters that people totally get tangled up in. Um, and find some relevance in their own lives. You know, that people who watch, you know, whatever Game of Thrones and and they find a connection between, you know, some, you know, queen of the dragons. You know, they like, oh, I, I, I'm connected with this thing or, you know, um, and it's one of those deals to me where like, because uh, really that's the basis of our civilization. It's the great stories, right? Like, and I mean, that's that's everything. That's our myths, that's religion. 
that's everything. Are, are they mm-hmm. storytellers? You know, and so um, I really try to do that in the artwork. I try to, um, I think about some of my favorite stories um, and I try to look at, at what down through history, um, you know, what we like to read about, what we like to believe in, you know? I mean, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's tons of books written about that stuff. Joseph Campbell's books and all that stuff. But um, uh, and then I just kind of do what I like, you know. I mean, I I like the idea of of uh, I like the idea of of answers that are just outside of the light, mm-hmm. and we're so close to getting them, but we never quite get. Like I love that shit. I love it, you know. So. Um, yeah, I do try to implicate that into some of the work. Um, I know that there is also a popular world, especially in art, of of work that is purely um, visual, like like just characters that just there's no backstory. They just they just are very visually stunning, you know. Uh, and I've done some of that too, but I personally find more satisfaction. If there's also a story, uh, mm. I think that makes the character. I think that gives a character a better shot of of kind of being around for a while, you know. So I'm going. To, I'm going to try to connect with uh, for one side with homies in Dreamland, and for the other side, because I know that a lot of people is asking right now about the stories behind uh, the Daryl and uh, your last collection in DB. So could you tell us a little bit more about this story and if any case is connected in somehow, because I guess all artists put like some prints in all they are, so <laughs> we can read, even if it's different collections, we can read them. So what is the story behind those? Okay, so the story behind which one? Homies in Dreamland or the VV stuff? Did Wendy freeze? I think she froze. Nope, I think Wendy froze. I think she asked you for the story behind Darrow. Uh, looks like we're still live. So okay. we'll, why don't we chat it up a little bit while we wait for Wendy to reconnect. She said she was in Colombia and she wasn't 1,000% sure on her internet connection. But it looks like we're live. Wouldn't still it be tripped out? Still ticking. Wouldn't it be tripped out if she was just like purposely just freezing like that? There she comes. There she comes. <laughs> I'm back. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'm you're all right. We got you. We got you. We held it down. <laughs> I am sorry. In Colombia, internet is the worst. <laughs> I am sorry about that. asking about the story of the of of the homies in Dreamland. Okay. okay. All right. So, so <laughs> the, you want the background? You you like the background story of the like the Darrow Veil vale thing or the homies in Dreamland? Which one? Did she freeze again? She may have, but Nikki just messaged me that we're still live. Can so you start first start with Hummus and Dreamland? Story, okay, and we'll, get, we'll get Wendy back in. Okay, let's talk about uh, the Darrow and the Veil. Um, so yeah, the Darrow, and I kind of we, you know, on one of the uh, AMAs with uh, Vivi last week, we we touched on a lot of this that um, the Veil, the Darrow are a race of beings that are very ancient, very little is known about them by the common people down through time, but people of power and people who, who, who know some of the secrets and are initiated into some of the, you know, smaller circles in society sort of knew of the existence of the Darrow. These, these beings that, uh, were, were, were sort of, you know, from time to time, manipulating things, sticking their hands into human affairs. Um, you know, the the ancient uh, the ancient priest, for instance, in Mesopotamia. Some of the ancient priests in ancient Assyria and and in ancient Egypt, uh, they knew of the Darrow's existence. Um, and the Darrow, many times. Um, would interfere and they would come to these uh a a lot of the technologies that were discovered were given as gifts to people by the darrow um and yet the darrow always it was always a two-edged sword you know 
uh, many people down through time who made alliances with the Darrow. Um, they were dealt, they were dealt, dealt blows that they rarely could recover from, you know, uh, hold whole civilizations vanished because they foolishly trusted the Darrow and got involved with them. And, um, the Darrow, uh, many, many, many ages ago, they they bioengineered the veil. These these beings uh, that we uh, that you saw in the last in the recent VV release, the veil. And the veil basically were made to just be basically workforce. They did everything. They did trivial things. They did heavy things. They did really clean, nice things. They did dirty things for the Darrow and um, the four the four veil creatures that we saw in the last VV drop were four particular ones who are known for being deviant they they resisted the Darrow's uh, control you might call them rebels and um, hmm. they basically started to feel like the things that they were doing they, they weren't very, they didn't feel right about it. They, they started to, to experience conscience and things like that. They met other individuals and started to experience like a, a sort of loyalty and trust to, to other things that were not Darrow. So this affected the way they think and that programming. Uh, I think everybody that got the figures, they see the chip on the back of the mm -hmm. head uh, they are very much bioengineered, so they are, you know, mm. flesh and blood. But there's also a, an an electrical component that keeps them sort of straight. And uh, more will come out. There are certain things about the veil's appearance right now. Uh, the four veils that we've seen, where you can look at them and tell automatically that they are deviant. Like you can look at them and tell as a certain way, and I'm not going to reveal that because that'll come out later. But right now, you could look at those four and tell, oh, they're deviant. Look at them, they're deviant. There's a way that you can tell, and there's a way that the Darrow can tell. And that's why they would go into hiding because there is a definite giveaway that they haven't really learned to hide yet. Um, so that's the story of the Darrow and the Veil. It's a you know, it involves a lot of players in history, names that you've heard about, um, you know, that have come in contact with them. And um, and yeah, and more will come out. You know, I've, I've graciously, VV is going to allow me to tell the story. <laughs> oh. so, so, yeah, so more will come out and there are other characters and uh, and everything is not what it seems. So like you may get an idea of like, okay, I know exactly what they look like or what this character looks like. And um, you may be looking at, you may be looking at a mask and not seeing the real character. So yeah, more of that is coming, hopefully. Well, first I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> internet was killing me but i think i fixed it and my uh, bad about that but i was listening to your story so right so do you mean that there is a possibility to see way more of collectibles of yours and vivi can you uh, give us a little bit of hint <laughs> <You're sorry. laughs> yeah i mean well let, let me just put it this way um yeah when i first when i first signed up with <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we plan to have a, we plan a very, a very long and beautiful relationship. So I'll just say, that. yeah, I love working with uh, David and Dan and Alex and Reed, everybody, you know? And, um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're already talking. I was talking with, uh, someone at VV a couple days ago about, um, you know, starting to discuss what the next drop will be. Uh, Cause I've got a, you know, there's a couple of storylines I've got going on over there right now. You've got the, the bunnies, the choices, that's a different storyline. And then you've got the Darrow and the veil. So um, that's a lot of, that's a lot for us to, to talk about. 
Wow, thank you so much. I'm not gonna go deeper on that, guys. So that he <laughs> just gave us a lot of information. And now let's go with homies in Dreamland. What is homies in Dreamland? I think Michael or Jeremy, who wants to answer that one? You want me to take? Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll start with the project, and then we'll let Jermaine tell the story. So, homies in Dreamland by Cheech and Chong with art by Jermaine Rogers. It's an NFT project we're going to be dropping on this coming Tuesday on the Ethereum blockchain, 10,420 pieces. All of them are going to be completely unique, designed by Jermaine. There's five characters plus a couple surprises coming, and Jermaine designed all of the, the art and the traits and the attributes and the backgrounds, and there's some awesome stuff. Um, in addition to just the art, we have a lot of utility, digital utility, real world utility. The real world utility is going to be in the form of tokens that are going to have video calls, group video calls with Cheech and Chong, and they're also going to make personalized messages for some people. Those tokens will be randomly inserted throughout the collection. In addition to those, we also have, um, they're going to make 40 uh, hand screen printed posters that are going to be autographed by Cheech and Chong, also sent out uh, to the community randomly inserted and also some number of glass pipes that will also be like specially made for the project randomly inserted throughout the collection. We also have a group of it's either 15 or 16 guest artists. You can see them in our discord, an amazing talented group of artists. We're not leaking that artwork, but it's some dope stuff. And those guys are creating one-on-one -on -one pieces randomly inserted throughout the collection again. So there's a lot of stuff like that. In addition to those utilities, we also are going to be airdropping eight posters over the first year. So if you hold your token or if you hold two tokens, you'll be getting eight times that many the tokens you have over the first year. Those airdrops are going to be classic Cheech and Chong posters and other artwork by Billy Perkins, who a lot of you have seen has done the PO apps, a bunch of the PO apps we've done. And he's been Cheech and Chong's poster artist for, I think, almost 20 years now. He's a great artist by himself. We're going to be dropping eight of those to everybody, gamified a little mm -hmm. bit, and each airdrop is going to have rarities that a lot of you are going to recognize. Common, uncommon, rare, ultra rare, secret rare. So depending on different circumstances throughout the project, for instance, the first airdrop, which is going to be March 1st, your token ID from one to 10,420 going up ascending order will determine your rarity. So the earlier you buy, the rarer that first poster will be. The second one's gonna be random. Uh, the third one I believe is um, also random. And then I think the fourth one goes uh, how long you've held it. So we're gonna reward the people that have held longer. What we're really trying to do is reward the people that were with us first. That's why the OGs get to mint first and they're going to get the lower number and also get that first airdrop will be a more rare poster. That's our way to reward those people. And like I said, on the fourth one where it's as long as you've held it. So even if you mint a higher number, but a whole bunch of people under you sell it, you hold, you'll move up in the rankings of where to get. So we're really trying to reward, like I said, the people that were here first, the people that hold, we're, we're building a community. As you see, Wendy, Wendy's also part of the community, everybody, an amazing, we have, we have, quite possibly the best group of community mods that I've seen in any discord. I'm not even joking. Like it's such a cool team of people. Uh, we've, we've built this from the ground up. There's 16,000 people. We, you know, we were, we're really trying to do our best to make sure nobody gets scammed, you know, never click any links in your discord DMS. We say that a million times a day. So, you know, the project from that respect, so from the art and the utility, real world digital, we're planning on having at least one VIP event where you have to be a holder to, to uh, go to the event. That'll be this year. And, you know, from, from my end, that's where we're at. We're, we're really trying to build a community and get the word out there. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. We're dropping this coming Tuesday. Uh, really suggest I, you probably have the discord link uh, for people. You know, please come join the discord, come hang out. We do movie nights on Sunday nights. We've had a lot of really cool stuff. It's, it's all about, it's all about the community. Yeah, Joe Kakihara, who just posted the, the puff, that's from the <laughs> Discord. Everyone posts that in the Discord, and that is like an automatic bot that puts the clouds. So uh, he's one of our community mods. We have, like I said, the community mods, the citizens on patrol are are 
awesome. Yeah, best Discord. Thank you, Drew. Like, it's the truth. Uh, it's it's all positivity. We're in there having fun day and night. So we welcome everybody to come. And then as far as the characters remains created and the the lore behind it and their their names and their stories and, and even the whatever you want to talk about. If you want to talk about how you kind of come up with some of the attributes, I'll let you take over for a little bit, bud. And uh, okay, well, um, yeah, the uh, the whole idea behind uh, homies in Dreamland. You know, I always say that um, Dreamland. Dreamland is around us all the time. Like as as we all sit here, Dreamland is all around us. Um, you're, you're only you know you're a you're a puff away, and then you're there. And uh, and in Dreamland, uh, uh, you know after after Cheech and Chong uh, took a hit on a on a very special uh, strain of grass. Um, it, materialized in dreamland and 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 the characters that we meet in this nf in this nft series are the 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 little handful of characters that they first meet and that they become friends with um so we we've got, we've got uh five characters and um we we we've already uh some of you have already seen uh the the sneak peek we did yesterday of z the bunny z is a is a grower you know, so he 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 likes to he likes to grow his own strains, and I mean, Dreamland the the land all around Dreamland is very fertile for this type of stuff. So he's he's all over Dreamland in different little valleys and in forests, and he's growing and um, testing out different things. He, he has his own uh, his own strain that he calls the Bunny Burn, um, and it's it's a pretty famous strain around Dreamland. Um, now. We haven't uh, we haven't s had a sneak peek yet at the rest of the characters, but this is what I'll do. I'll give you the names of the rest of the characters and tell you a little bit about them, and then you'll just have to wait on the sneak peeks to see what they look like. Okay. So um, the next character is Gabby, and Gabby is a cat. She's a, she's a little cat who is very very um, she's very together. You know she's. She's one of those. Uh, she's one of those beings that everybody else kind of looks to her and like really appreciates her advice and any time that she gives them, because she's a she's a really deep thinker and she's a philosopher. She's an artist at heart, and um, and she is all about like not just the good feelings of 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 being in dreamland, but that it um, that it opens her mind up to other possibilities. So we all know somebody like that, you know. So she, Gabby is 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 the homie who's that. She's that homie in Dreamland that everybody everybody loves her, you know. Um, and then we have um, Yummy. <laughs> Yummy is a is a a THC gummy bear. And Yummy is just like the friendliest character, the friendliest creature. Um, you know, everybody loves Yummy. Yummy is that 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 guy that'll give you the shirt off of his back. Just really sweet and good and pure. Uh, Yummy loves um, he he loves to uh, to to do a lot of reading. He also uh, loves doing like amateur archaeology. So some of the old, like some of the old um, ancient sort of spots in dreamland that are like deep in the forest or on the other side of the mountains, you know, Yummy is always there like doing excavating and, you know, Yummy loves like researching and exploring. Uh, and Yummy's biggest um, hobby is mushroom picking. Yummy knows where all of the wild mushroom patches are. Yummy loves picking mushrooms. Yummy loves eating mushrooms. Okay, so um, Yummy is a friendly homie. We'll meet him. Um, then there is a uh, Spaz. Spaz is a fox, <laughs> a little fox. Um, Spaz is like 
never happy about anything, always complaining, always irritated. <laughs> like, you know, just that kind of, you know, you we all know somebody, you know, who on you know, if we keep it real, it's you know, some of some of us are spaz. You know, it's like it's just like, you know, there's always something, you know, like it, things can never be okay. You know those people when you ask them, hey man, how you doing? And the and the answer can never be okay. It's always got to be something like, oh, I'm, I would be doing okay, but blah, 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 blah. That's fast. And um, the one thing, though, that chills spaz out is, is weed, you know? Like, weed just kind of chills him the fuck out. And <laughs> so everybody knows, all of the homies, like, you know, spaz can be difficult to deal with, but all of the homies love him. They all know spaz is a good dude. He's good dude. You know, he just is high strung. He's on edge about everything. A lot of anxiety. Then a final character that we meet is actually not an individual, but it's a it's a race of characters. And they are called the munchies. <laughs> now, the munchies, <laughs> the munchies um, are just, you know, they, they are a native dreamland resident. They run all over, like, you know, they're all over dreamland. The munchies, they've got colonies all over dreamland. They're, they're everywhere. And they're these friendly little colorful guys. And um, and they just love, you know, they love, they just love smoking. They love playing. They love eating. They just, you know, in fact, all of them together. So, like, every munchie is 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 like a co-op co owner. Um hmm. In in the uh, in the um, the hottest fast food restaurant in Dreamland, the, the hottest fast food restaurant in Dreamland is called Munchies, and <laughs> so every Munchie is part owner. It's like that birthright. If you're a Munchie, you're part owner in the restaurant. So, um, so yeah. So the Munchies are really friendly. Just, just it's all about just chilling, having a good time, whatnot. So those are your five characters, and uh, we've seen. We'll see. I think today we'll we'll see uh, Gabby, right? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. Today we'll Four, see Gabby. Usually four twenty Eastern. Yeah, four twenty Eastern on uh, the Discord and uh, Twitter as well. Twitter for sure, and I think we're going to do Instagram as well today. Okay. So we'll get a chance to look, and so each day, counting down towards the release, we'll we'll we'll. Will reveal another character for you to see. Um, now there are two other characters, but we're holding them back because they they, they are uh, that's sort of our our little secret characters that we that we're gonna reveal uh, probably the day before or so the project drops. So all together we've got a total of seven characters, and we feel like you know it's it was a fairly ambitious idea. You know most. Most of these series uh, deal with sort of like one base character. Uh, these generative series, it's like one base character and then a lot of traits for that character. Uh, and we, we, we decided early on to be fairly ambitious and introduce seven characters. <laughs> and so all of them, uh, so much work between myself and Gary Gick, the, the, the lead tech guy on this, uh, in making sure that the attributes uh, are shared across all seven characters, even though the characters are wildly different. Um, and there'll be some little things that we do that we kind of are really proud of, little tricks that we did to where I think people will look at it and be like, okay, how did they do that? How'd they pull that off? You know. Um, but overall, um, my main goal was to make sure that the characters had um, personality, you know, that the characters actually that you that you feel something, you know, that you feel kind of attached to the characters, that you maybe choose a favorite, or you know, like um, because the, the the story only works if the characters are interesting, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. that's pretty much a breakdown of of the the lore and the characters, and there you go. Mm. Awesome. So, 
Can I ask about, because um, someone is keep repeating, how can they get into buy an NFT of the homies in Dreamland? Can you yep. tell us a little bit about that? I guess my For question. sure. So the first thing to do would be to join the Discord. And there's a channel in there called Greenlist Waitlist Info. We've actually had really overwhelming, um, you know, response to that. And we've, we've filled out thousands and thousands of forms and wallets. So we have tier one, tier two. If you fill it out now, it's going to put you on tier three, which is technically the waiting list. But we are going to, we're actually going to have, we're having a meeting later today. And we really want to try and dial in what the limits are and how many per tier and what we're going to do. We want to be very thoughtful to make sure that, you know, we get as many uh, people as we can to to buy. And we want to make sure that, you know, we reward everybody who's here early and be as fair as possible. Um, we know with 10,420, it might not be possible to make every single person happy. But um, so that being said, your best bet right now is to get on the wait list. And to participate, if you show up for movie night, for the past movie nights, we've been upgrading people to tier two that show up and participate because we want people that participate in the community to be able to purchase. Um, at this point, the, the list is getting so robust that I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do there. But um, there are um, there's going to be there's going to be ways we're going to have we're going to have spots available for people. So. Come and join the community. And if you want to be part of it, you know, come join the community. And that's going to be your best bet to try and get one on the primary. Obviously, there'll always be the secondary. We don't know what that's going to look like. We can't control that. But, um, yeah, we, uh, we, yep. we, we, yeah, we want as many people to buy as possible. And, and even if you don't buy, even if you just want to come join the community, come join us on Discord and hang out. Even if you don't plan on buying an Ethereum NFT, like, come be part of the community. We'd love to have you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Michael. Can you hear yeah. me? Well, I still can hear you. Oh. oh, lost her. She'll be back. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me so, just add too to everyone that's listening that uh, you know, the characters and the universe. You know, while we design them obviously for this project, they 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 are that she is. <laughs> Uh, while, while we them, uh, I'm about uh, to jump from a bridge. <laughs> uh, you're good, Wendy. No, while we designed them for this project, we designed this. This is not just like, oh, let's design this for this project and then we move on. Um, if if the project, you know, it's all about, you know, an artist kind of meets the the, the audience halfway. So like you know, it's like the artist comes out and puts out the art. And if it's reciprocated, if, if people are interested, then it sort of gives the artist the, 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 the sort of the pass to continue. Like, okay, well, let me tell you more. So, uh, it, you know, hopefully everybody loves Dreamland and, and enjoys the characters because there's still more Dreamland stories to tell, you know, in the future. So um, it, it, this can be a, a beautiful introduction to, to some characters that we hope will be around for a while. And, and Cheech and Chong are not the kind of, uh, you know, they, they've, been, they, they've, they've basically let us know that they are, you know, those dudes are outlier like legends, you know? They, they were into the sort of edges of society and and ideas that other people were not quite comfortable with and things like that they were into that 50 years ago you know and so mm -hmm. to listen to those guys talk about nfts and about crypto is really awesome because like they get it and they and they love the idea as because they're artists so they really love the freedom that this new format gives them for for more expression of what they want to say so I, I guess I'm just saying all that to say that, like, um, yeah, we, we really do. We, we've invested a lot of time in these characters and uh, and we hope the characters will be around, you know, for a while. So I would like to know where the idea come from 
of the characters because uh, because of Chich and Chong or because who you are as an artist, how those characters came to life? Uh, you know what, it, it's, I guess you could say it was a, a combination of all of those things. You know, I mean, um, mm -hmm. I wanted to design the Cheech and Chong ethic. You know, what I, what I didn't want to do was design like a, you know, we wanted to design a world where that ethic, because Cheech and Chong, they're really, um, in that sense, they're really humble guys. You know, they're really self-effacing. And for them, it's like, it's, it's not about them. It's about the things that they believe in, you know? And uh, so we tried to build a universe with characters around that ethic. And then what I tried to do was just uh, come up with characters that I felt could be really cool to relate to. Um, you know, everybody that knows me knows that I love anthropomorphic creation. You know, I, I love... I, I just think that that's just something that we naturally all as humans love because uh, all of this life is around mm -hmm. us and we are so geared as human beings and you know, communicating with each other. So there's this natural, like, look at all the different ways that we like really try to communicate with every other living thing. I mean, there are people who like literally scientifically, you know, try to communicate with plants and trees which hmm. I'm a big advocate of, by the way. I, I believe we measure sentience in very limited ways, you know, um, mm. because a tree can't smile at us. We think that, oh, it's not aware. But I, I think there's a lot of evidence that a lot of the things that we feel are not aware, they are very aware. Um, so I like creating from that standpoint. And then it gives you freedom, too, to sort of... Uh, that's just something that seems a little bit more, um, I don't know, when you see, when you see a little, a little animal creature register feelings of like pain or register feelings of self-doubt or jealous mm -hmm. or like real love, um, I think it hits you a little harder. It takes you, it kind of, it takes you, hits you a little off guard, you know? And so I think, um, I think it's important to, to make characters that way that people can see themselves in. Mm -hmm. So that's how I approach the character building. Um, and then uh, the ethics, which are like, obviously uh, green friendly ethics, you know, smoking and token, uh, natural, um, natural um, um, exploration, you know, whether it's, whether it's grass or whether it's mushrooms or peyote or, you know, ayahuasca tea or whatever, natural exploration of the gifts that the planet has given us for that mm -hmm. thing. Um, and then freedom, like independent personal freedom to be whatever you want, you know, women's rights, women's equality, um, you know, equality and justice for different racial uh, groups, you know, Black Lives Matter, Stop Asian Hate. Um, all of these things are things that if you follow Tommy and Cheech, you know they are very outspoken about, very outspoken mm -hmm. about. So all of this is kind of, you know, mixed in a blender and comes out, hopefully, we, we did have justice with this series. Which of these characters uh, represent to yourself the best? Which one do you identify with? <laughs> I'm, going, <laughs> I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the standard answer. I see myself in all of the characters. So I, that, that's a little bit of me in every single. I mean, you know, I'm. I, I've got a lot of the. Um, the 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 working the kind of working man's mind like Z the bunny that's a part of me that's very artistic like Gabby uh, that's a part of me that like fucking is not is like I can complain about a lot of things if I want to like Spaz um, that's a part of me that just wants to be a good dude like I really do that's a part of me that really just wants to be a good dude and that's yummy the bad you know 
And then there's a part of me that's just all about, hey, man, let's just smoke and eat and have a good time because that's really, in my opinion, you know, it's just my opinion. Everybody's like, what is the purpose of life? I think the purpose of life is to be happy, period. And and if you're a good person, you do that with as little collateral damage to the people around you as possible. But other than that, and that's the munchies, you know, the munchies are just like, hey, we just want to be happy. And so um, I'm in all of them. I think everybody can find a little of themselves in all of the characters. You know? How do you define happiness for you? For me, happiness is being mindful and having gratitude. Like mm. being mindful and realizing, like for me, like realizing that I am not my thoughts. Um, mm. Because if you confuse that, you can have a miserable time. But when you realize that like your thoughts are like these sort of weird abstract things that sort of just float into your, your head, and you have the decision on whether you are going to interact with that thought or let it pass. And when you when when I when I fucking like when I hacked that, I got a lot happier because I'm like, you know what? I'm not my thoughts. And, and so like then you start to notice stuff about yourself. Like if something happens and it makes you get stressed out and you start to notice like, golly, look at how that thought made me. My heart is racing. Hmm. Like, uh, But golly, man, I'm feeling jealous because of that, this thought. What is, you know, and like, so being mindful kind of like, I think it aids you in being happy because it lets you know that really like, man, everything is everything, seriously. And people get all hyped up about shit and like none of it matters. It really doesn't. It just doesn't, you know? And so, um, you know, to me that, and then like I said, being full of gratitude, like, Just gratitude, man. I'm just thankful to be. I mean, I'm, I'm thankful the universe decided to put me, you know, like, okay, this time around, you are this dude. And I'm here for a while and I'm trying to enjoy it and not attach too much importance to it, you know? It's just a, you know. It's hard to talk about. We need to smoke up, but we can talk. Uh, about it. <laughs> Help yourself if you need to, Jermaine. Have that take if you need to. I'm working. Wow, it's amazing. You're, you're, you're in Texas like, too. You're in Texas. You don't want to put that on camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so with homies in Dreamland, we can see all of this that you are saying portrayed into all your art and also as well in Vivi. Can we see all of this in all the characters? We are going to see all of this. I think we'll see a lot of things in the different characters as the, as the stories go on, you know, you'll see these, mm -hmm. the uh, moments, you know, characters are funny because you, uh, you, you have to create like, Things art 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 never works unless people can aesthetically own it. Like if have you ever like looked at a piece of art and it's so complex, it's so complicated and amazing that you know you look at it and you you are impressed by the detail, you're impressed by the complexity of the technique. But it doesn't really make you feel anything. You know what I mean? It's because it's just so beyond you. There's no way aesthetically that you can own it, you know? Um, and then you look at like certain pieces by like artists like Keith Haring and they're really, really simple, but they hit you and you like, like aesthetically, I can own that, you know? And um, so I, I think your best characters are characters like that, that you can see a bit of yourself in them. And, you know, you can see a bit of like what you love in some people and what you hate in some people. I mean, and there are definitely characters in my stories that are characters that you, that you hate. Mm. So, yeah. I think uh, I would like to know more about uh, Michael. Can you repeat a little bit about uh, where it's going to when it's going to happen? Because I, I have seen new people and uh, before where and when. For sure. Where so when? the drop is going to be January 25th. We're going to start at 10.20 a.m. for our tier one 
um, green list people. You know, we call our pre-sale list a green list for this one. The price is going to be 0 0.1420 Ethereum. There's going to be 10,420 pieces. And we're going to start to mint. It's one week from yesterday, so it's Tuesday, January 25th. The public sale, depending on how many, well, there will be a public sale. We're not sure exactly how many will be there, but it will be at 4.20 p.m. Eastern. And then the pieces will show up on OpenSea. Now, everybody needs to know that you don't click on any links at all except for our official links in Discord. If anybody DMs you saying that they're from our server, they're not. We will never send you a DM. We're not going to mint before the 25th. We're not prizes. So don't get tricked into clicking any links. Real, we have an official links channel in our Discord. That is the only place that I would suggest and that our team suggests that you click any links. But we're minting on Tuesday right. the 25th. And make sure you're at the right spot. Mm -hmm. And Michael, you said that uh, if they were seen about the spots that we talk, can we say that yes, a little bit about we that? We did talk, and we have 25 tier two green list spots to offer for Wendy's listeners. So, how do you want them to claim, Wendy? Do you want to do like a contest, or do you want to do the first 25 that ask for it and we get their wallets? Uh, what do you think? I think it's uh, the First, uh, oh, what about if we combine with the BB thing? So tell us uh, what, which collectible, the, fir the first 25 people that tell us the one collectible of Germain that they have, they can have the green, uh, oh, wow. they can go into the green list. How, how do you think about that? I think that and sounds cool. And they tell us the mid number. So, okay, so to yeah. the first 25 people, that tell us because you can lie, <laughs> but with the wind you cannot. <laughs> yeah. I, I know my people. <laughs> so the first 25 people that uh, go to the Discord, the Discord, the link is down there, and you tell us uh, which German uh, character do you have, uh, which mean uh, you have one spot for the green list. How sounds that, Michael? Good. I think that sounds awesome. All right. So now you know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> a special treat oh, for people I'm, that are I'm listening so today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My internet is so bad today. I feel so stressful. <laughs> nah, it's good. This has been great. Jermaine and I held it down. We made fun of you a little bit when you disappeared, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to home in Finland. <laughs> yeah, a little yeah, bit. <laughs> when, when, he, when he took a puff of that good stuff. <laughs> I wanted to do in action. Yeah. All right. So again, guys, uh, the first 25 people that tell us, not here, not in the comments, go to the Discord, go to uh, green list, wait list. And yep. Tag Wendy. I just see uh, we got we got Stoneman, Stoneman, just uh, posted. He's got the number 80 specimen. Good for him. Um, yeah. So start that up. We'll keep a little list and. And you guys will be good to go. I, we appreciate everybody listening in. Um, we have a couple more social events with the guys. Friday night, we're going to be on Twitter space with Cheech and Chong. We did that a few nights ago. Had about 900 people in there. Um, people from the audience can come up and ask a question. So if you ever wanted to ask Cheech and Chong a question, you'll have a chance over the next week to, to maybe ask them a question and speak to the legends. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, anything else uh, that would you like to say before the end? No, I think I think we're pretty good. I mean, we're we're thrilled to have this community we're building. I'll let Jermaine say a little something after me. I just just really happy to be here and proud to be part of this project. Such a robust, diverse team, great people all around. So like, it's really coming together well. And I I I'm really hoping and I see some really big things for this in the future with what I hear everybody talking about. Yeah. Right on. Yep. Same, same, same for me. Like I'm so glad that everybody is supporting and um, appreciative for everybody on the team. It's a great team to be on. And um, and to all of you out there who are supporting the artwork, thank you so much. It is a. Uh, it's not just how a lot of us pay our bills, but it also uh, lets a lot of us know that. Uh, that we that we contribute a, a, a beneficial service uh, to to you know um, 
artists need we need to make art as much as you guys need to see it. And so um, I really appreciate all of the support. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks yes. for having us and everything you do. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. For sure. Everybody, thank everybody you so much. Wendy. We know that, you know, so it's good stuff. And I'm sorry. Like, I really try to do my best, but my internet today uh, is horrible. Nothing, you have nothing to be sorry about, Wendy. <laughs> I am so good sorry, stuff. Jermaine. I'm sorry, Michael. No, and I... no it was, it was <laughs> obviously any anytime, anytime that you spend feeling anxiety about being sorry is like a waste of time because I have no problems. This was great. And yeah. you, you, you were gone for just a moment and we just kept on. We just kept talking. It's fine. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you for being here. And thank you, Jermaine. I really admire your work. I hope you're listening to this. <laughs> and I'm thank sorry. I hope next time I promise that I will be like at least in Mexico to have better internet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Right on. So thank you so much for the art and I really love it. And thank you to so my family. And don't forget about the 25, 25 spot to get into the green list. So take care everyone. And Jermaine and Michael, if you can wait one second and when I finish the to say bye in the in the yep. green room, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much everyone. And see you soon. And I'm sorry for bad internet in Colombia. Next time I'll be in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>